me ask you a question. Is it easier to start something or to finish it? Well, you know the answer to that. All of us have started stuff and then we ran out of juice and never got finished. Well, today you are in for a real blessing. Our confirmation class is joining the church. These are 18 young people who have been mentored across a few months, who've been going to classes to learn about what it means to believe in Jesus and to follow Jesus. And so today, they're making their commitment to Christ and to the church. Now, the one thing that I'm talking with them about today is this. It's not just making a decision. Like, okay, I joined the church today, well, that's all. It's not just about making a decision, it's about making a commitment because that carries for a lifetime. Well, that's the same message for you and for me. So join with us in worship now and let's celebrate what God is doing in the lives of these young people and what He's doing in our lives as well. glad to see you here today. This is a special day in the life of our church where we are welcoming our confirmation class who are making a commitment to Jesus Christ and a commitment to His church. We are so blessed to have family here uh, visiting and helping to celebrate. I was out there sh shaking and baking around through the crowd. And I looked up the, and I could hardly, I thought, find a seat. I thought, well, I guess I'm glad I've still got one up here. And if uh, ushers, if they, anybody comes in late, we've got one uh, behind the pulpit here. <laughs> but we also have uh, just a few, if you want to send them up there, where Bob Flummerfelt is seated. And Bob is 94 years old today. And I'm impressed he can still go upstairs. <laughs> what a wonderful man of God and a dear brother and friend in Christ. At some point during the service, lest I forget to tell you later, would you sign the attendance register and pass it down the pew? Would you give us some information? We'd love to be able to uh, be in touch with you. And we especially welcome those of you who are here as loved ones with a uh, young person being confirmed, or with the baptism that we have today. Uh, just a quick note, we have, as you walked up here, you saw that we have the blood mobile out here. The, all of the spots for giving blood have already been taken. Let, but what? 
Give it up. We're all about this. So, good news. You can still go and give blood and they'll take it uh, after the service. So, anyway, we're just delighted that you are here. Take a look at the announcements in the bulletin. This is a wonderful day of worship. Will you join with me in prayer? Heavenly Father, today we come with such deep gratitude for our young people who are filled with the Spirit of God, taking on a new commitment to Christ and to His church, and we pray a blessing on them. Let us all truly worship You in spirit and in truth. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Join with me in singing number 298, When I Survey This Wondrous Cross. We'll be singing stanzas one, three, and four. Join me in singing. Today are, are delighted to offer the sacrament of baptism to Thomas Levon Elliott, son of uh, Travis and Amanda. And you might know Amanda from growing up in the church here as Amanda Zipper or Elliott. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sins? Do you accept the freedom and the power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression? in whatever forms they present themselves. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior and put your whole trust in His grace and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ opened to people of all ages, nations, and races? Will you nurture, nurture this child in Christ's holy church that by your teaching and example you may guide him to accept God's grace for himself and to profess the faith openly and to lead the Christian life. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? We do. Will you nurture one another in the Christian faith and life and include John now before you in your care? Or Thomas, excuse me. 
forgive me. Thomas, now before you, in your care. With God's help, we will will proclaim proclaim the the good good news news and live according to the example of Christ. We will surround Thomas with a community of love and forgiveness that he may grow in his service to others. We will pray for him that he may be a true disciple who walks in the way that leads to life. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Eternal God, when nothing existed but chaos, you swept across the dark waters and brought forth light. In the days of Noah, you saved those from the ark through the waters, and the flood you set in the clouds a rainbow. When you saw your people as slaves in Egypt and led them to freedom through the sea, their children you brought through the Jordan to the land that you promised. Sing, Sing to, to the, the Lord, Lord and all, all the earth. earth. Tell of God's God. mercy Amen. each day. And in the fullness of time you sent Jesus, nurtured in the water of the wound, and was baptized by John, and anointed by your Spirit, he called his disciples to share in the baptism of his death and resurrection, to make disciples of all nations, declare, declare his, his works to the nations, nations and his, his glory, glory among the all the people. Pour out your Holy Spirit, and bless this gift of water, and he who shall receive it and wash away his sins, and clothe him in righteousness throughout his life, and that by dying and being raised in Christ, he may share in the final victory. All praise Praise to you, Eternal Eternal Father, Father, through your your Son, Son, Jesus Christ, Christ, who with you and the Holy Holy Spirit Spirit, lives and and reigns forever. Amen. Oh, boy. Come out of me. Come out of me, boy. (laughs) Oh, my. Yeah. Right here. <laughs> Thomas, Thomas Levon, we, we baptize, baptize thee in the, in the name, name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Early in the history of Christendom, it was a custom to put the sign of the cross in oil on the forehead of freshly baptized new Christians. This we follow in that tradition this morning. You go light. Also, Jesus said, I'm the light of the world, but he also said, you are the light of the world. And so we invite Travis and Amanda to come up and, and light a candle, um, signifying the light of the world. Push it down in hard because it doesn't know when it's wrong. Got it? As we go to the Lord in prayer, let us take just a a moment of silence 
to personally connect with God, and then I'll lead us in a pastoral prayer. Then we'll join together in the Lord's Prayer. So let's pray. Almighty God, you who call us to prayer and who offer yourself to all who seek your face, pour out your Holy Spirit upon us today and deliver us from coldness of heart, wandering minds and wrongful desires. By the power of your Spirit, place within us steadfast love and devotion so that today we may worship and serve you with all our lives. Hidden God, yet ever present, may we now be present to you, attentive to your every word, attuned to your inspirations, alert to your touch upon us. Empty us that we may be filled with you alone. Through your spirit, we come together as your people in partnership with you and each other to carry out your purposes. We thank you for the differences among us by which we are enriched and through which the Spirit prompts us to grow. We thank you for your amazing grace which forgives and restores us, for the passion for goodness and wholeness you sear in our souls. We thank you for these new members you are given us. Help us incorporate them with joy. Let us all be channels of your love to all you put in our path. In this morning hour, we thank you for a fresh chance. We don't want to waste the minutes and hours you've given us. We want to be alive to you, to every experience and conversation and even mundane task. Let us live every moment for you. Here are prayers for those who need the springs of love spilling into the dry, desert-weary souls. Break open our clenched fists, clutching our meager faith that we might share your real presence with all who search and seek. Soften our hearts, confining love to safe spaces that we might lavish love upon a world starving to be cherished. Grace us all with faith that we might abandon all the petty concerns of life and follow you completely. Empower us with your spirit that we might carry the vision of your kingdom and work with the energy of mind and heart for its coming. All this we pray in Jesus' name, the one who taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. As we continue worship, we sing, Were You There? We're going to sing the first two stanzas of this wonderful hymn. Join me in singing.
You may be seated. If you have not yet passed the uh, black pew pad down, if you would do that so that we could have a record of your attendance, we'd be grateful for that. We'll invite the ushers to come forward, and while they're on their way, I want to mention two things. Uh, some of you know Brinson and Lori Barker, uh, their aunt and uncle, or Mar uh, Jack and Marsha Rudolph, and uh, Brinson was able to be back. They've gone to Guatemala as missionaries. They were back, or he was back for a few weeks and was able to speak to our Wednesday night group. We were able to bless them with uh, some finances, and uh, four children were sponsored out of our church. And, you know, those are four lives that are touched by the grace of God. I think that's just marvelous. Now, speaking of that, you know, right now we're going to receive a gift of money, and that's important. But I don't want us to miss on this day, maybe above all the other days in, uh, in our church year, when our confirmands are joining the church, God is asking us to be good stewards, not just of the money, but God is asking us to be good stewards of the people that He is entrusting to us. I mean, this is just a good-looking, intelligent, and committed group of young people that God has given to us. One day, God will say, were you faithful in helping them to grow in grace? And we want to be able to answer yes. So let's, as we give our money, give faithfully of ourselves so that our young people may be blessed and God's kingdom may be built up. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much this day for these 18 young people who come full of life, full of vision, full of hope and blessing. We ask that you would pour out your grace on them. Now receive these gifts of money that we give, but it's just a representation that we're giving our whole life to you. In Jesus' name, amen.
Well, this is a great day in so many ways, and I just want to have the privilege of coming down here for a minute and talking with our young people, and you all are welcome to listen on in for a minute. Well, I heard about uh, this little girl who went to kindergarten, and she was just so excited. You know, first day at kindergarten, she got all dressed up and got her little lunch box and all and went to, went to kindergarten, came back at the end of the day and when mom and dad went to uh, pick the uh, child up, she was just downcast and discouraged. And they said, well, what's wrong? Said, well, I guess I didn't learn everything. I've got to go back again tomorrow. <laughs> well, you know, we kind of smile at that. And, you know, we understand what she didn't. She thought it was just a decision to go for one day. But it was a commitment that you just keep on going and you keep on learning. Now, most of you are in what grade? Six. Six. Okay, most of you are in sixth grade. So, what is your reward for doing really well and learning all the stuff in sixth grade? We're going to get a good job. Uh, no, not yet. But you're going to go to seventh grade. And if you keep at that eighth grade, and you, you'll keep on going and learning along the way. Well, today I want to talk with you about one thing, and it's this. There's a difference between making a decision and making a commitment. How many of you know how to play the piano? Okay. How many, is there anybody else who started to play the piano and then stopped? Okay. Now... <laughs> I want to just show you something that's a difference between a decision and a commitment. You are about to see something that has never before been seen in the history of the world. Lester did not know, nor anybody else, that I can play the piano. <laughs> Let's see. Ready for th uh, this one is by... Uh, Johann Sebastian Duck Dynasty. I think, I think it's called um, Mother, Mother, May I Go. It goes something like this. No, hold it. That's, that's close, though. Uh, let's see. Uh, there. No, that's not it either. Um, you know... I thought I had this one down here. Let's see. No. Really, uh, this is one that I felt like I had in hand. And apparently I don't. Well, if I knew how to play this, I would tell you this. That it is the only song that I know how to play on the piano. And apparently I don't even know this. Now, the reason I share this humiliating story with you is that I made a decision one day to learn a song on the piano. It was a long time ago, and the song has gone. But, by contrast, your fearless leader, Emily, has made a commitment to learn how to play the guitar. And notice the subtle difference between what I can play on the piano and what Emily can play on the guitar. Give us a tune. Sure, I'm going to have to come near you. <laughs> That's okay. Now, I want you all to know something. That's the difference between a decision and a commitment. Because she didn't know how to play that well when she started off. 
She kept at it, and she learned, and she kept learning, and she's going to keep on learning. And she's going to keep on improving, and she's going to keep growing. Now, here's the thing that I want for us to hear together. You're here today not to make a decision, but to make a commitment. And there's a difference between the two. You know what is the gym or the exercise places in town? What's their favorite month of the year? January. January. Why? That's right, everybody's going to get in shape this year, and the gym is packed in January, and it's empty in February, and March, and April, because people made a decision, I'm going to get in shape, but they never followed through. I'm not going to ask to show hands here, but I wonder in how many homes there is exercise equipment that you have discovered is excellent for hanging your laundry. <laughs> we start off on something, but then we never really finish it. I know somebody who bought a diet book and lost $20. <laughs> you know, buying a book isn't going to make you lose any weight, is it? It's not just about getting something or getting a good start but it's about seeing it through and finishing all the way to the end. Listen to what it says here in Ephesians chapter 4, and this talks about not just making a decision, but a commitment to keep on growing. He says, we will no longer be babies in the faith. Can you say babies in the faith? Babies in the faith. You want to stay a baby in the faith? No. no. He says, we will no longer be babies in the faith. We won't be like ships tossed around on the waves. We won't be blown here and there by every new teaching. We won't be blown around by the cleverness and tricks of people who try to hide their evil plans. Instead, we will speak the truth in love. Can you say, speak the truth in love? Speak the truth in love. We will grow up, grow up. Into, Christ into Christ in every way. In every way. He, is he is the head. Now, that's much better. You said, we'll no longer be babies, but we're going to grow up in Christ. That's what we're talking about today. He makes the whole body grow and build itself up in love under the control of Christ. Each part of the body does its work. It supports the other parts. In that way, the body is joined and held together. See, this is about not just making a decision, but making a commitment. What I want you to hear today is you're not at an ending point, you're at a starting point. You're going to come up here in just a minute, and uh, many of you are going to reaffirm your baptism. Others of you are anticipating your baptism. We have, by the way, five of our young people who want to be baptized. They've not been baptized yet, but they would like to be baptized by immersion. Uh, some of you don't know, and that as Methodists, we believe in baptism by immersion. It's just hard to get them in that <laughs> font there. We, we keep, anyway, if we ever are able to build something else around here, we're going to put a baptismal pool in there. Usually, our Baptist friends or somebody will let us use their baptismal pool, although I do need to say sometimes they generously invite us there, but forget to heat the pool. And I have seen uh, some of our folks being baptized who walk on water. Anyway, <laughs> they're nothing like a, quite like a cold pool to make an impact on you. But they would like to be baptized by immersion, and so that, they're going to do that in the near future. But what I want to say is as they come now, they are making a commitment. You all aren't at the end. Say, yes, we joined the church. Now it's over. Now, nope. you've joined the church. <laughs> Man, they're getting younger and younger wanting to come to Jesus all the time. I'm telling you, Jesus loves the children. We do too. Here's the thing. You are at a beginning. N are any of you are just content you're not going to grow any taller, not going to get any bigger, not going to get any smarter? You, you all content? Yeah, no, listen, you all, well, you're going to get taller and stronger and better looking and smarter. 
Why? Because you're going to keep at it. You're going to keep growing. You're going to keep learning. You are making a commitment of your whole life, and today especially we're talking about you making a commitment to Jesus Christ. Now, let me just stop here. Somebody would say, well, you know, why, why am I meant to make a commitment? Let me just tell you the clearest reason. It's because God has made a commitment to you. You all know that? Jesus left heaven to come here and be born among us. And by the way, when Jesus came, it was not into a really prosperous world like we have. I mean, he was born dirt poor, and day by day they were just trying to make a living. Why, why did Jesus come and go through all that? And why did he keep at it? I mean, you know, it, things got tough for him, and he could have just said, well, Father, you know, I quit. But he didn't, because he had not just made a decision to come to save you and me, he'd made a commitment. And that commitment carried him all the way to the cross. And so what we're asking of you as you come here today is to make a commitment to follow after Jesus. We want you to be faithful to him. We're glad you're joining the church today, but this is not an ending. This is just a beginning. Let me close by telling you about a guy named Martin Luther. Now, some people know about Martin Luther King, Jr. You know, he's famous here in America. But he was named after Martin Luther, who was a German priest way back hundreds of years ago. And the church had gotten off track. The church had said, hey, you want to be saved? Well, here's the deal, Connor. If you'll give me some money... I'll give you a certificate, and I'll sign it. And when you get to heaven, you can say, I got the certificate, let me in. And Martin Luther said, no way. The Bible never says anything like that. In fact, the Bible says we're saved by trusting in Jesus, and it is when we trust in Jesus, he takes our sin, gives us his righteousness, we're brought back into the family of God. That is what sets us right with God. Well, they put Martin Luther on trial, and here's what they said to him. You ready? He said, here I stand. I can do no other, so help me God. Now, I want to say something to you today, and that is, it's all great here. I mean, you all dressed nicely and looking good and family, all, and this is great. But there's going to come days in the future where other people may make fun of you, where they say, oh, you, you believe in some God you can't even see, and they're going to say, oh, come on, do this thing that you know is wrong. And they'll say, what are you, some kind of goody two-shoes? They make fun of you, but I'm telling you, if you just made a decision, you'll bail out and you'll just go do what everybody else does. But if you made a commitment, like Jesus has made a commitment to you, he will hold you strong and never let you go. The best name for a Sunday school class I ever heard is this, no turning back. That's what I want to pray that your name will be, that they will, we will always remember the confirmation class of 2014. They didn't make a decision. They made a commitment, commitment. no turning back. Amen. All right, we're going to invite you to come on up. And congregation, uh, this is going to take a few minutes, and we may just go a little bit over, but that's all right. I want to tell you why. God has given us so many young people today. We just are going to treasure everyone. We're going to go through and call each one by name. We're going to lay our hands on them and anoint them with oil and pray God's Holy Spirit blessing over them. And no, we're not going to rush through it because every one of these young people is God's own child. Do you know what Martin Luther, he was a professor. Do you know what he would do whenever he would come into one of his classes? He would stop in the doorway, come into the class, and then he would take his hat, and he would do like this. And then he'd go over and hang up his hat. And one day somebody asked him, why, why do you do this all the time and tip your hat? And he said, because when I walk into my class and I see all the students, I never know which one among you may change the world. And so if I had a hat, 
I would tip it to you yes. because I don't know which one of you God may use to change the world. You have already heard the invitation to baptism, but I'm going to say it again. Brothers and sisters in Christ, through the sacrament of baptism, we are initiated into Christ's holy church. We are incorporated into God's mighty acts of salvation and given new birth through water and the Spirit. All this is God's gift offered to us without price. Now, through confirmation and through the reaffirmation of our faith, we renew the covenant declared at our baptism, acknowledge what God is doing for us, and affirm our commitment to Christ's holy church. Confirmands, as I present you for confirmation and or baptism, I'm going to call your name and you're going to come forward, okay? I present Caitlin Elizabeth Herring for baptism and confirmation. I present William Martin Jones for baptism and confirmation. I present Allison Faith Moore for baptism and confirmation. I present Lillian Rose Parrish for baptism and confirmation. I present Kara Ann Sellers for baptism and confirmation. I present Corbin Reed Bailey for confirmation. I present William Cole Broomberg for confirmation. I present William Maxwell Colbreth for confirmation. I present Elizabeth Rainey Evans for confirmation. I present Connor Douglas Hedgecock for confirmation. I present Caroline Grace Langston for confirmation. I present Luke Octavio Negrete for confirmation. I present Grayson Lee Sanderlin for confirmation. I present Alexandra Jean Sayre for confirmation. I present Natalie Rose Simino for confirmation. I present William Sherwood Steinberg, Jr. for confirmation. I present James Dalen Strickland for confirmation. And I present Caleb Mitchell Watley for confirmation. Caleb, we always get to the W's eventually. <laughs> we are grateful for all of you, and as Lily is coming to join the church today, so is her uh, family, and we're so grateful for Craig and Mitzi and for Ruby. Uh, they have been faithful members of our church for, uh, or participators in our church for a long time, and uh, we're just delighted to welcome them. So I'm going to invite them to, as I ask these questions to all of you, they're going to be answering them as well. On behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in His grace, and promise to serve Him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages, nations, and races. And according to the grace given you, will you remain faithful members? That means commitment, not just decision. Will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? I will. At this time, I'm going to ask all of our mentors to stand up, please. Um, these confirmants have had 18 mentors praying for them and writing them letters for 10 weeks. And um, they stand before us as well. And I'm going to ask you guys a question. Will you who sponsor these candidates support and encourage them in their Christian life? Thank you. 
You can be seated. Compromise, you may kneel. Caitlin, anticipate your baptism and be thankful. Caitlin, the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Will, anticipate your baptism and be thankful. Will, the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Allison, anticipate your baptism and be thankful. Allison, the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Lily, anticipate your baptism and be thankful. Lily, the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Kara, anticipate your baptism and be thankful. Kara, the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Corbin, remember your baptism and be thankful. Corbin, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Cole, remember your baptism and be thankful. Cole, the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Max, remember your baptism and be thankful. Max, the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Elizabeth, remember your baptism and be thankful. Elizabeth, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Connor, remember your baptism and be thankful. Connor, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Caroline, remember your baptism and be thankful. Caroline, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Luke, remember your baptism and be thankful. Luke, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Grayson, remember your baptism and be thankful. Grayson, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Alexandra, remember your baptism and be thankful. Alexandra, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Natalie, remember your baptism and be thankful. Natalie, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. 
will. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Will the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ? Amen. Amen. Dalen, remember your baptism and be thankful. Dalen, the Holy Spirit work within you that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Caleb, remember your baptism and be thankful. Caleb, the Holy Spirit work within you, that having been born through water and the Spirit, you may live as a faithful disciple of Jesus Christ. Amen. Stand up. Okay, Compromands, I have a question for you guys. All right. As members of this congregation, will you faithfully participate in its ministries by your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? We will. We invite the parents to come forward and stand behind your youth. Compromands, as they come up, please turn and face your parents. Parents, what a sacred and holy moment this is when your youth joins you in the Christian life. What words have you for your youth? As your parent, I am proud of the decision you've made to accept Christ and join this church. I promise to support you as you grow in your relationship with Christ. I will pray for you, teach you in our home, help you keep the vows you've just made, and live before you a life that leads you closer to Christ every day. And now, um, if you will, uh, compromise, if you will, uh, walk in front of your parents. Okay. Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. We give thanks, thanks for, for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together in the body, in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our, our prayers, prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God, God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Christ. Well, congregation, I am delighted today to present this wonderful group of confirmands and their families to you. So we're going to conclude the service now. I'm going to invite you to stand where you are, and I'm going to ask that uh, the confirmands and their families, if you all would just remain here for a little while. Congregation, come forward and greet them and especially uh, put a, a big hug on these young people who have come to be a part, not just of our church, but of the family of God. Now, I invite you to join hands with those who are next to you. We do this at the end of every service. We remind ourselves that we are not alone but God is with us. And so, brothers and sisters, the God of all grace, who has called us to eternal glory in Christ, establish you and strengthen you by the power of the Holy Spirit, that you may live in grace and peace through the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Well, there it is. A decision or a commitment? Well, that's up to you. Today, Jesus is asking you not just 
to say, oh yeah, I made a decision for Christ one time. It's about a commitment to follow Him every day. And you know what? Jesus is just waiting this day because He loves you so deeply to walk with you this day and every day. Listen to Jesus as He says, follow me. Make a commitment.